Hey, hey, welcome back to the Let's Play. It's a new year. We wrapped up the winter project for 2023. So what that means is we can start getting back to some of our older projects in this world. So we're going to start off today with a big one, which is Project Pokemon Librarian Edition. I've already prepared the land around here. We've already got ourselves a creative test build as well. So I actually know what I'm doing for once. And I've got myself a ridiculous ton of resources, which, by the way, is mostly the reason there hasn't been an episode of this series for a little bit. I've been getting wood, I've been getting a bunch of purple concrete, black concrete, white glass, glowstone, lanterns, and then over here, a whole bunch of bookshelves and a whole roost of other stuff as well. There's so much stuff that's going to be going into this build. It's going to be crazy. But the one thing I can tell you right now is there are 35 viable top tier enchanted books that you can get from librarians. So what that means is inside this build, there's going to be 35 spaces for 35 librarian villages. So I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like another excuse for me to start live streaming from this world, eh? And talking of which, we're actually going to do the comment of the day at the very start of today's episode. Snig by Life says, I'd love to see any live stream run on this channel. Keeping all your Minecraft content on one channel makes the most sense. You're probably right, to be fair. A lot of you folks were going ahead and saying something very similar to that. Live streams from this world and, well, any Minecraft live streams will be done on this channel, okay? If I do manage to get the Python Live channel back in my hands, I'm probably, if I'm being honest, I'm probably just going to wind up ridding it. I've been wanting to rid a bunch of my older inactive channels for a while now. You know, things like Python GB2, Python Live. I know they shouldn't really be on my mind at all in terms of, you know, feeling like I have to maintain them or whatever, but it will just free up a bit of mental space in my head, if you get what I mean. Ideally, I'd also like to get rid of my my snowy viper channel which for any of you guys who don't know it was the channel that i started running when my main python gb channel got terminated for about a month and a half back in 2014 it's a channel that again it's inactive and i just don't see a reason to have it anymore mega minecraft madness on the other hand which was the very first youtube channel i ever had I'm going to keep that just for the sake of history. I mean, we need to see where we started in life, hey, my friends. And I think the same goes for anyone's YouTube career. It's nice to go back and just see where you started. And from there, sort of determine how far you've come in however long you've been doing YouTube. Anyways, my apologies. That was a very long-winded intro, but, you know, it's a new year. I wanted to make sure I got everything in my mind out of the way. So let's put away this comment of the day book. We're gonna have ourselves a bit of a snooze, and then we're gonna begin on our Project Pokemon Librarian Edition build. Basically, a giant library. Oh yeah, random side note. The reason I haven't been able to get rid of my Snowy Viper channel is because it's another channel I've completely lost access to. My two-factor authentication is for a phone number that no longer exists, slash I don't use anymore, and I didn't have any backup codes handy, so, um, yeah. It's sucky. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think the time has come. We are going to begin on our build. And the first thing we're going to do very, very simply is we're going to replace all of this deep slate here, which basically outlines the footprint of this base. We're just going to replace it with spruce wood. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the sides. And then we sort of do a semi curve type thing around here, rather like this. And then I believe it's 12 blocks until we meet up in the center center entrance here. So let's just make sure that's right. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think it goes without saying the reason I'm building this and the reason we're going to be getting so many villagers is so that in the event of a death where we actually lose everything in this world, we can get ourselves back up to scratch pretty much immediately. All we'd need to do is purchase a bunch of books from villagers, head on over to the Enderman farm in the end so we can get ourselves XP and then use whatever anvil that might be there to 
you know, put the books on bits of gear. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted that my knock draw loose bow has actually been repaired. Unfortunately, it's the penultimate repair I was able to do to this thing. It costs 17 levels, which I believe means the next one is 33, and then after that, it becomes too expensive to repair. So maybe at some point, we'll need to make ourselves a tool morgue or something like that at some point. I mean, for the most part, we are using mending on all of our gear, but some bits I don't have mending on. Uh, the only reason I don't have mending on here is because you can't have both mending and infinity on a bow, right? So, you know, it is what it is. So, coming up next, we are going to start adding in a whole bunch of supports. And in terms of any windows that we make, they are going to be no more than three blocks wide. So, it'll be one, two, three. And then we'll add ourselves a little bit of a marker here. Then it's another three. That'll bring us to just out here. Then what we do is we sort of beef up the corners a little bit by adding a few more bits of wood. And then we'll add ourselves another marker just out here. So again, we've got a three block wide window. So what we're going to do is we're going to wind up having some very large corner windows in each of the four corners of the base because I figured that could be quite a nice looking thing to do. But here we go. We're at the side of the building. We're going to do the exact same. It's going to be three block wide windows. And again, we need to sort of beef up the corners a bit. Now, just to mention this build, it's a pretty big build. So I think it actually warrants a two part here. Today's episode, we're basically just going to create the structure and in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll probably work on getting the entire interior done and maybe one or two villagers actually put in there. Needless to say, the reason we're splitting this into two parts goes back to what I've always said from the start. I want to not feel like I have to make massive amounts of progress per episode and sort of inadvertently by doing that, hopefully you guys will be able to perhaps get some inspiration from this thing as well as we go along. Why is it thundering on this world as well? For any of you guys who don't know, I got struck by lightning on my new Minecraft Hardcore Season 3 series. Literally, first episode, I got struck by lightning and it took me down half health without armor. I thought that was absolutely crazy. In the entire 13 plus years I've played this game, I've never ever been struck by lightning in Minecraft. But a Minecraft Hardcore attempt being the first ever time that happening? <laughs> I mean, if that's not a sign, then I don't know what is. I just hope that whatever death we wind up inevitably having in that series, it isn't a stupid one. Although, to be honest, maybe that's not the viewpoint I should be having. Maybe the viewpoint should be, I'm not going to die. I'm going to survive it. It's going to be a case of third time lucky. Alrighty, we need to start building up these walls now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab out a bunch of this here stained glass. We're going to create ourselves quite a lot of stacks of white stained panes. Grab out some black concrete as well. And we're going to have all three of these on our hotbar. All right, now what we do with the black concrete is we add in a little bit of a layer while also sort of beefing up the support just a little bit more. The black concrete here is basically going to be where the windows are going to sit. And now what we do is we start heightening this stuff. Oh, jeez. After killing this guy, that is... Ah, get out of here, son. Maybe a quick snooze is in order to get rid of the mobs of the night, eh? And while we're on our way back, I just want to remind you folks that if you are still enjoying the series and you do want to continue seeing more, do be sure to drop a like beneath the video. It's the easiest way of letting me know if you are still enjoying the series. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. And of course, if you do want to go on further with your support, use code Python when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs for 5% off. So, no more dilly-dallying. Let's get this thing underway, shall we? We're going to go three blocks up with these windows to start, and then we're going to beef them up even higher a little bit later. But yeah, I'm just doing this for now so I can actually, you know, reach everything. In terms of the corner windows, of course, we're going to whip out some regular glass. We're going to have to take something off here. I'm thinking we get rid of the hoe for now. Always a good idea to always have ranged weaponry on you, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, check it out. It's already starting to take shape quite nicely, I would say. But now what we're going to do is we're just going to add in a little bit of a black concrete rim again while simultaneously 
beefing up the supports right here. The reason we're adding in this little black separator here is because, of course, this is going to be a two-story building. So, yeah, lots and lots of villagers strewn across two floors means that we should actually be able to dedicate a fairly all right amount of space to each of the villagers. They won't just be sat in a crummy one by one little hole or anything like that. No, 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 no. We're going to have our villagers feeling pretty at home, I hope. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm sure you guys can figure out what we're going to be doing next. We're going to add in another three block tall window with another black rim at the top. I wonder if I could do this all in one, actually. One, two, three, four. Ah, no, you can only do three at a time, huh? Okay, never mind. I'll make it work. It's very possible that this build that we're making today might just take the title for the largest single build that we have in our world so far. And uh, what, episode 94 we're on in total now? For that to only happen now, it's kind of bonkers to me. But you know what? I'm absolutely not complaining. I'm glad that we've gotten around to doing some slightly larger builds now. We have the ability to. I've got farms all over the place. I have the ability to get loads of glass from trading with villagers and all that kind of stuff. I've got near infinite bone meal from the hostile mob drop trap farm that we made in season one early on. So, you know, what's really stopping us from making these large builds? Probably my own personal motivation. I mean, large builds, when I look at them and plan them and I sort of think about making them in survival mode, I usually look at them and I'm like, oh my god, I actually have to do this in survival mode now, you know? <laughs> and honestly, yeah, it can be a bit of a daunting prospect, but, you know, once you do get it done... It's quite a satisfying feeling, I assure you. And as I usually say with sort of middling to large size builds, it's all about building a rhythm. A lot of what you do in medium to large size builds, in my opinion anyway, comes down to repetition. Like for example, a lot of repetition was done here, wasn't it? With the windows and the black rims and beefing up the supports here. And we're going to be doing the exact same again by adding in another black rim here. So, you know, again, it's just repetition for the most part. A lot of the time, what you could probably do once you realize that actually medium to large size builds, it's just a lot of repetition. You could probably just chuck on some music and then just sort of enjoy some chill vibes. So yeah, for any of you guys who are looking for any tips when it comes to medium to large size builds in Minecraft and keeping motivated, there you go. Split it into smaller parts and then pretty much stick some music on in your ear and then you're pretty much good to go. And there we have it, my friends. Look at it. It's starting to take shape quite nicely, isn't it? Look at all the space we have on the interior here. <laughs> all right, guys, without saying, the next thing we need to focus on is getting a roof on this thing. And if I'm being honest, that is the main reason why I have quite a lot of glass on the go because, well, there's going to be a lot of glass in the ceiling, so so we can see the elements above us. It's going to be a combination of white stained glass and also some beautiful deep slate. Oh yeah, it's going to be the way to go for us, my friends. Let's get ourselves maybe a few slabs. I'm going to go for even more stairs. And now we need another well-deserved rest. I should probably get myself another bed, eh? Maybe then I don't have to keep coming back in here. Although I kind of like doing so because I get to see all my little pets. Eh? Yeah, look at all you folks. <laughs> I love coming back in my episode one house. This is the house I made on episode one of the entire series. It's a house that has very slowly evolved over time. Like, for example, when I first made this house, these cherry blossom mini trees weren't here. I think we just had ourselves like a micro crop farm kind of deal going on. But yeah, maybe that's what we could do for each episode going forward. We adapt our episode one house to match whatever update we are in. So with the 1.21 update, maybe we can upgrade this to be a whole bunch of copper related blocks or something. Maybe make it like a little industrial revolution kind of front yard. Not sure how we'd achieve that just yet, but could be kind of cool. So going back to the whole repetition thingy, we're going to add in a whole bunch of these deep slate tile stairs, just sort of in between the supports here. Definitely not going to be like a super extravagant roof by any means, but it's certainly going to do the job. And sometimes I feel like a nice simple roof in Minecraft might just be the way to go. All right, then we add in another layer of stairs. And I'm out of deep slate stairs already. Good grief. Two stacks went like that? 
Good lord! Alright, time to start adding in the little connecting bits and bobs. Um, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll roll around the edge here. We're going to add in some upside down stairs. Maybe a regular stair there. Another upside down stair. Now we'll start going at it with the slabs. We'll go up one block at a time. Then let's say we've got two blocks there. Okay, let's do the same over this side. So we got one here, across one, up one, across two, then up one. Then actually, I could probably keep this going. So again, we'll go across two, then up one. Do the same over this side. And I'm sure you guys know what we're doing. We're just trying to make this sort of meet up to a central point. So something rather like this. Is that a decent looking curve? I think it is. And now we see if we can make the sides connect up. The only thing is the distance between the edge and the middle going from the side is quite a lot further than going from the back to the middle or the front to the middle. So what that means is the gradient here is going to have to be a little bit less, I guess. So let's say we go up one and then we immediately go across two, maybe up one, go across, ooh, I don't know, three? Yeah, and then we go up one, one, two, three, and then up again, there we have it. Yeah, I think we worked that out pretty perfectly, actually. When you realize you didn't put the stair rim sort of covering the entrance. Yeah, I should probably do that, eh? All right, brilliant. So, now, ladies and gentlemen, is when the fun begins. What we need to start doing is we need to start adding in a whole bunch of glass. All right, just the corner to figure out, and then we should be good. So we add it in rather like this, then we'll go up a block, and then I'm going to say we turn a corner there, and then we add one further glass block there. Yeah! All right, so looking at it, from the underside. Yeah. And to be honest, getting the corner sections done was arguably the more difficult one. Getting these sort of central sections done should be easy as pie. Alrighty, my friends. All of the corner sections are now in, in terms of the roof. And like I say, the central section here should be easy as pie. So yeah, we're going from the bottom here. We're going to have two blocks on this next level. Rather like so. And then it's going to be, what's that, three blocks on the next level so that'd be one two and three and then of course we top it off with some glass up here as well and ladies and gentlemen just adding in the final section of glass for our roof and there we have it yeah nicely symmetrical as far as i am able to tell Okay, right, so the only way people will be able to get in here now is via this massive entrance, which obviously I'm going to sort of dull down a little bit in a minute. All right, I think the only other things I wound up doing in today's episode is I'll probably start laying out where the librarian areas are going to be. In fact, I might start off with the librarian areas. So we're going to have ourselves a few areas rather like so, where there's going to be seating areas, actually, because... I mean, that's just what you have in a library, isn't it? You have a little bit of a seating area so you can sit down with whatever books you may have and then you can have yourself a good time reading whatever book you have. But yeah, basically we've got one large window assigned to each of the villagers. It's going to be a two by three space for each villager. There will be some corner villagers as well. And the fact of the matter is this. We're going to have the lectern right here. So obviously the librarian can work. And then either side of it, we're actually going to have ourselves a chiseled bookshelf. You know, those bookshelves you can actually physically put books in them because then we can store the enchanted books of that type in the chiseled bookshelf. It makes sense, doesn't it? So just so I can make sure that I'm actually assigning enough spaces here, I'm going to put down a wood block where the lectern for each person is going to be, right? So there's going to be one there, there's going to be one there, there's going to be one on the corner, and of course back here there's going to be a whole bunch as well. So a quick count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so that's 19 out of 35, meaning the top is going to have 16 villages, so eight either side. You know what? Maybe we should lay out the second floor villager areas as well. And more to the point, maybe get ourselves a bit of a staircase going up to said area. So there we are. Staircase is just about taken care of. And we'll add in some extra supports rather like this. So it looks like the second floor is properly supported. 
Yeah, all right, very good. Now I feel like we could probably get away with adding in the other staircase because this is going to be a perfectly symmetrical build pretty much. So, yep, again, we'll add in a bunch of stairs. We're actually going to whip back out the black concrete here because on my creative test world, the black concrete actually served as the floor for each of the little villager holding areas. So we'll get that added in. Just adding in the floor for the little villager pens. And yeah, once we have everything all sort of connected up, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. Then what we start doing is we start going at it with the fences, just so we can ensure our safety. I mean, there's nothing worse than getting injured in a library. So let's go ahead and make sure that doesn't happen, eh? <laughs> and then it goes without saying we need to replicate Okay, all of this on the back side. And once again, adding in the floors for the eventual librarian pens. Now, there are going to be some spare spaces. For example, this part here. This is just going to wind up becoming another seating area. But hey, I had another idea. There's always the possibility that new enchantments could be added in future updates, right? So maybe the seating areas could wind up being sacrificed to any new enchants we may wind up getting. You, my good sir, are also a sacrifice to, well, I mean, everything. I mean, he did ruin my season two hardcore run, right? Creepers and creeper kind. I can't believe I used to be a creeper. Just unbelievable. I can only assume it's some sort of divine justice for me no longer being a creeper. As in, I no longer have a creeper skin, do I? On Python MC, I rolled around as a red creeper, didn't I? But not anymore. All right, so real quick, I'm just going to add in where the lecterns are going to go again. So there's going to be one there, two, three, and four. That's going to be a seating area looking out the front. That's going to be quite a nice view, actually. There'll be a nice tree with some little bits and bobs behind it. That's going to be quite nice. So, yeah, we've got four there. One, two, three, and four. And then we go on the back side here. That'll be another one, two, three, and four. And four. And finally, this would be, what, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Perfect. 35 spaces for the 35 top tier enchanted books you can get as of 1.20. Now, in terms of the structure of this place, I think the only other thing we need to do is add in the front door, and then I think we'll leave it there for today's episode. Next episode, we will work on the interior and getting this thing entirely finished. We won't necessarily get it populated, but I'd like to begin on populating it, at the very least. Maybe we get one or two villager zombies that are roaming around, and that will be the way we do this, by the way. Just sort of, over time, if and when we get any villager zombies come around here, then, yeah, we'll cure them, put them in the library, and then we're gonna have villager curing discounts, aren't we? So, yeah, gonna be very good. Alright, let's make a start, shall we, my friends? For the most part, it's gonna be a very, very simple entrance. It's not gonna be anything extravagant by any means, but I have added a couple more black concrete blocks back here. Now, annoyingly, yeah, this build is sort of a few blocks lower than the pathway here. But on my creator test world, it was sort of all the same level. So yeah, as a result, this place does look a little bit peculiar, but I think we can still make this work. We just need to have a bunch of stairs going down to the actual entrance itself, and then we should be good to go. It's almost like a semi-hidden entrance at that point then, isn't it? Anyway, no matter. We'll still make this thing work, my friend. So there we are. Let's just get ourselves a bunch of slabs here. We're going to start adding in the slabs, rather like so. And as a result, tying off the entryway, rather like that. We can add in the iron door, rather like that. We can start adding in a little bit of that. Then what I actually need to do is I need to see about making the stairs sort of connect up with that, rather like so. And there we have it. Just like that, we actually have ourselves a front entrance. We just need to add in the window up there, and then we are totally done. All right, let's add in the button. And we'll add in the button on this side as well. We'll add in a bunch of wood just to finish it off. And there we have it. We have a fully secure unit here, my friends. I mean, aside from the fact that sometimes monsters can spawn in here because I think there are some dark spots, but we'll gloss over that for now. So, yep, little bit of windowage. And there we have it. I mean, that literally is it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. 
Oh, dude, I can't wait to get this thing finished in the next episode, my friends. I really, really can't. And I really do hope that you guys don't mind me splitting uh, sort of my larger projects into two episodes. I mean, again, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, it all goes back to the whole thing about me not feeling like I have to make massive amounts of progress per episode and instead focusing on having fun. And, well, as a result of me splitting this into two parts... I'm actually having quite a lot more fun. You know, I don't feel as much pressure to get a whole bunch of stuff done in one episode. I mean, for goodness sake, getting the structure done was quite a big undertaking, wasn't it? I spent a long time gathering the resources for all this, but I got there. And at the very least, we've certainly laid down the foundations to do something pretty great with this in the next episode. Uh, right, let's see about putting down some stairs real quick. There we are. And uh, we can still get down into this thing, right? Yep, looks like it. <laughs> it really is like a proper hidden entrance, isn't it? I have half a mind to move the entrance up here, actually. It would be a bit of a faff, and it would be differing from the creative test world version of this build that I've got. But... I think it would work better because I don't feel like a hidden entrance to this thing would do this build justice. I feel like we need to have the entrance instead be on the top level there. And actually, when you think about it, you know, when you roll in on the top level, you just sort of waltz up to the fence here and ooh, there's quite a lot more to this build than meets the eye, you know? Ah, okay, okay. Epic ideas. Epic ideas are epic. We're going to go ahead and do that. And there's another upside to me sort of splitting this project into multiple parts. I don't feel nearly as much pressure to not be as indecisive. Like, I can make decision changes if and when I please. And honestly, that feels pretty good. Do we even need a window there? I mean, if the entrance is going to be up here then I don't know. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure a window's going to work here, so I think we're just going to go for a solid wall, and then, oh, I don't know, probably just sort of expand the seating area. So we're going to have a seating area here and here, but what we could actually do is expand this and make this entire area into a seating area. Yeah! I just realized something. All of these uh, wood bits that are supposed to represent where the lecterns are going to go, they're all a block too far back. It's supposed to be on this level here. <laughs> there we are. Perfect. Now everything's properly laid out. Fantastic. Right, I just want to sort of cap off the little supports here with a slab. I feel like that'd be a good way to go. And for now, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're just about done. Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad that I uh, sort of decided to relocate the entrance up here because as a result, it looks a bit more sort of El Grandio. I like it. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back to this project in the next episode to fully finish off the interior, get ourselves a couple villages in there, perhaps. But for now, I think it's time for some shout outs at the House of Legends. So turns out there's actually quite a lot of shout outs to give in today's episode. We've got four new members since the last episode. And I think if I'm being honest, that is probably thanks to the new Minecraft hardcore season that has started. It's brought in a lot of new folks lately. And if you are new to the channel lately, thank you so much for giving my content a chance. So, MQ25, Susie Toth, or Toth, not entirely sure of the pronunciation of that, I do apologize. We've got Dylan and Writer, and we've got Neo Kicks. Thank you so much for becoming members on this channel. I really do appreciate it. Three of you went for the tier that came with a sign. If you are watching today's video, then you can, of course, let me know if you want your sign to be colored, rather like some of these other folks here. And Susie and Dylan, you have picked the tier which allows me to pick a mob and give them your name. Looks like I'm going to need to get myself a few name tags, my friends. Looks like I've got some naming to be done. And then with the top tier membership on this channel. We've actually got Jess with Ones 2023. They've been a member for a while, and I don't know if you're watching today's video, but you haven't let me know what mob you'd like assigning your name, because that is what you can have with the top tier. A mob of your choosing, you know, provided it's not something that's ridiculously hard to get, nor a boss, and then you can name it as well. So, if you're watching today's video, let me know. Now, in terms of the Super Chat Legends, I've actually slightly changed how I'm doing this, because in 
my Minecraft Hardcore series that I started recently, I actually decided to start shouting out the folks who donated specifically to videos in that series. So yeah, since the last episode of this series, we've had Dylan and Writer, who again is someone who became a member on this channel. So thank you so much for the additional support. And they donated 20 Australian dollars. Thank you so much, Dylan. I really appreciate that support, buddy. In terms of you beautiful folks who donated on the Minecraft Hardcore series, you can expect your shout out to be in the next episode of that series. So episode three, there's going to be a whole new roost of shout outs because believe me, there's been an absolutely insane amount of you folks who decided to go above and beyond with your super chat donations. So truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you all. Now, of course, we did the comment of the day at the beginning of today's episode, so that means it is time to wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, of course, you'll be excited to see the next one where we finally get this build finished and perhaps populated at least a little bit, then do be sure to head down beneath the video and let me know that you've enjoyed this episode with a big old like rating. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And in the meantime, if you guys have any hints, tips, suggestions, feedback, regarding today's build, head down to the comments area and let me know. I do my best to read and respond to as many comments as possible, my friends. But yeah, for now, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!